I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network. Federal Judge Tanya Chutkin moved swiftly in the federal courthouse in Washington, D.C., where she's presiding over the new case against Donald Trump brought by special counsel Jack Smith for Trump's crimes relating to the 2020 election and the January 6th insurrection. On Friday morning, a hearing was held over the protective order that was proposed by the government and special counsel Jack Smith's team and the objections and dueling protective order proposed by Donald Trump's lawyers led by John Loro. During the hearing, Judge Chutkin made some very powerful statements and gave some powerful warnings to Donald Trump's lawyers, and she made it clear that she would not be treating Donald Trump any differently than any other criminal defendant before her. Then shortly after the hearing, within just a few hours, she issued a final protective order. In the final protective order that she issued, she granted in part and denied in part the protective order proposed by special counsel Jack Smith's team. She overwhelmingly agreed with the protective order by special counsel Jack Smith's team, except in one discrete area. Special counsel Jack Smith's team almost wanted a blanket protective order calling all documents documents, sensitive material, and she provided limitations in the final order on ultimately what was to be called protective, uh, sensitive material subject to the protective order. She admonished Donald Trump in this protective order that these uh, sensitive materials and uh, Donald Trump's lawyers as well, that these sensitive materials cannot be transmitted to anybody other than authorized persons who that's a defined term subject to this case. And she made it very clear that there would be serious ramifications if the protective order was violated. Um, going back to the court proceeding on Friday, then we'll go over what was actually in the protective order. Judge Chutkin said the following, and I thought this was a very powerful statement when she admonished Trump's lawyer, John Loro. She said, Loro, you are conflating what your client needs to do to defend himself and what your client wants to do politically. Your client's defense is supposed to happen in this courtroom, not on the internet. Judge Chutkin continued, quote, what the defendant is currently doing, the fact that he's running a political campaign, has to yield to the orderly administration of justice if... That means he can say exactly what he wants to say about witnesses in the case. That's how it has to be, Lauro. Mr. Trump, like every American, has a First Amendment right to free speech, but that right is not absolute. Defendant Donald Trump's free speech is subject to the release conditions imposed at arraignment and it must yield to the orderly administration of justice. Judge Chutkin concluded that hearing by saying the following, quote, I intend to ensure the orderly administration of justice in this case as I would with any other case. Even arguably ambiguous statements from parties or their counsel that threaten the process will be subject to my court sanctions. In addition, the more a party makes inflammatory statements about this case, which could taint the jury pool, the greater the urgency will be that we proceed to trial quickly. I will take whatever measures are necessary to safeguard the integrity of these proceedings. Shortly thereafter, she issued the protective order. Let's pull it up right here. Protective order governing all discovery and authorizing disclosure of grand jury testimony. It should be mentioned before I go over this order that special counsel Jack Smith's team led by Tom Wyndham announced in court that there was approximately 11 million documents or pages rather that would be turned over forthwith to Donald Trump's lawyers. 
By now, those documents have already probably been turned over as special counsel Jack Smith is looking for a January 2nd, 2024 trial date and does not want to delay at all. Here's the protective order governing discovery and authorizing disclosure talks about how the protective order does not apply to information or records that are publicly available independent of the government's production, nor does it apply to information or records which the defendant or defense counsel came into possession of by independent means. So the purpose of this protective order is to deal with the documents being produced by special counsel Jack Smith's team that Trump and Trump's lawyers have never seen before. If this were documents they already had, if this were public information, it is not subject at all to the protective order. And now let's take a quick break to talk about our next partner, Fume. Cold turkey, it may be great on sandwiches, but there's a better way to break your bad habits. We're not talking about some weird mind voodoo from your wacky neighbor or some sketchy message board. We're talking about our sponsor, Fume, and they look at the problem in a different way. Now, not everything in a bad habit is wrong. So instead of drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit? Fume is an innovative, award-nominated device that does just that. Instead of electronics, fume is completely natural. Instead of vapor, fume uses flavored air. And instead of harmful chemicals, fume uses all natural delicious flavors. You get it. Instead of bad, fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit easy. Your fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing and anxiety while breaking your habit. The first time I used fume, I was shocked at how flavorful and fresh it tasted. Now, it's easy to hold and perfectly balanced and quite honestly, extremely fun to fidget with. The real wood material and sleek design definitely classes it up, and I feel pretty darn cool holding it. Stopping is something we all put off because it's hard, but switching to Fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 100,000 customers and has thousands of success stories, and there's no reason that can't be you. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com and use code MIDAS to save 10% off when you get the journey pack today. That's tryfum.com and use code MIDAS to save an additional 10% off your order today. It then defines what sensitive materials are. It says sensitive materials, which the United States may designate in accordance with paragraph eight below, are subject to this order and may be used by the defendant and defense counsel, defined as counsel of record in this case, not any of Trump's other lawyers, solely in connection with the defense of this case and for no other purpose and in connection with no other proceeding without further order of this court. So some important limitations there that the government wanted. It can't be Trump's other lawyers, it can't be volunteers, it can't be random people. It's Trump's counsel of record only, meaning that they have to put their names on the court filing, enter notices of appearance in this case, and these documents can't be used in any other case or any other matter or anywhere else. Let's take a look at what documents are defined as sensitive material, which was referenced in the paragraph I just read. We go to paragraph eight there. So sensitive material is defined as materials containing personally identifying information as identified in the federal rules of criminal procedure, meaning Donald Trump can't post information where people live or what their addresses are or uh, anything like that or where they're traveling to. Rule six materials, which is Grand jury, subpoena returns, witness testimony, and related exhibits presented to the grand jury. Again, Donald Trump wanted these to be public and non-sensitive. The court is saying that this consists of any of the grand jury secrecy material, remains confidential, subject to the protective order. Sealed orders obtained by the government's filter team related to this case. Recordings, transcripts, interviews, reports, and related exhibits of witness interviews 
Trump wanted those to presumptively be public so he could harass and intimidate witnesses. Special counsel Jack Smith prevailed in getting uh, these documents to be maintained in confidence and materials obtained from other governmental entities. That is pretty broad as well. It would likely also include the documents from the January 6th committee, which special counsel Jack Smith's team wants to turnover and which Donald Trump lied to the American public and everybody claimed were destroyed. Going back up to paragraph three, it makes it clear that the defendant and defense counsel shall not disclose sensitive materials or their contents directly or indirectly to any person or entity other than persons employed to assist in the defense, persons who are interviewed as potential witnesses, counsel for potential witnesses, and other persons to whom the court may authorize disclosure. Potential witnesses and their counsel may be shown copies of sensitive materials as necessary to prepare the defense, but they may not retain copies without prior permission of the court. Then it says the defendant, defense counsel, and authorized persons shall not copy or reproduce sensitive materials except to provide copies of sensitive materials for use in connection with this case by defendant, defense counsel, and authorized persons. Such copies shall be treated as the same as the original before providing any sensitive materials to authorized per authorize persons. Defense counsel Councils must provide authorized persons with a copy of this order, and they must put in writing their agreement to uh, abide by this order. And then it goes on to say that uh, sensitive materials must be maintained in the custody and control of defense counsel. And if Donald Trump, this is paragraph 10, wants to review uh, this material, he must do so. With, he can't bring any electronic devices. He can't take photographs or copies of it. He can take notes, but he can't take any notes that contain personal identifying information. And his lawyers are on the hook if he breaches that. So he can't bring in electronic information. You know, he can't bring in his cell phone or uh, cameras or do anything like that. He can't write down in his notes the personal identifying information, um, and that's to protect witnesses. And again, special counsel Jack Smith getting most of what he wanted there. Signed August 11th, 2023 by Judge Tanya S. Chutkin. She moved swiftly, methodically, diligently, folks. This is a law and order, no-nonsense judge. And her admonitions to Trump and Trump's lawyers was very clear. You violate this protective order and there will be serious, serious consequences. I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network. Go to MidasTouch.com, the new website for all things Midas Touch. That's MidasTouch.com, wherever audio podcasts are available. Also search for the Midas Touch podcast. Have a great day. Hey, Midas Mighty, love this report? Continue the conversation by following us on Instagram, at Midas Touch, to keep up with the most important news of the day. What are you waiting for? Follow us now.